everyone welcome to the channel we definitely appreciate you guys watching today we got a pretty good show we're going to talk about guns and we're going to talk about you know that that guy that is looking for for his first uh for his first handgun uh now i got the firearm guy here he has a bunch of guns that he, <laughs> amazing looking pistols that he's going to share with us and he's going to he's going to talk about him so um everybody knows the firearm guys but just just some people that may not know you dan do a quick intro Okay, uh, yeah, I'm the firearm guy. My name's Dan. I've uh, been doing this for quite a while, and this is a great platform to show off, okay, because I tell you what, the cool thing about showing off in, in YouTube and things like that is that, you know, you can actually show off your guns without shooting them because anything else that you go get, you can go play with it right then and there, not your guns. So uh, I got a table here that uh, that I'm just going to love this. <laughs> That's uh, that's you know, everybody awesome, does man. have the question of what is the best gun for the beginner. That, mm -hmm. that question comes up all the time, and there are some variables there, so I'm sure we'll get into it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we appreciate you coming and you know and spending time here with with the Jarhead Six Compound. Um, you know, it's awesome. I always love when you come because you you got a sweet collection of pistols, man. Like like I look up to you. In the future, you know, like when somebody asks me, "How do you want? Who do you want to be?" I'm like the firearm guy. He has way too many guns. So well, I'm a blessed man. We'll say it that way. <laughs> it takes, you know, I was talking to a guy the other day, and I was telling him too, you know, it takes years. Eventually, you you've oh, been yeah. collecting guns for so long that that you know, I remember when I got my first pistol, and now I got you know, several pistols and revolvers and you know what it is. But uh, just quick announcement, announcements, uh, 7 o'clock Eastern time every Sunday we're going to release an episode of, of the radio show and uh, every day 7 o'clock Eastern time um, I'm going to be releasing videos. Almost every day I may go to a rotation when it's every every two days or something like that or every other day. Just stay tuned to the channel and like I say about 7 o'clock Eastern time, you should see the videos. Uh, I'm gonna put a link below to the firearm guys, uh, firearm guy channel. So go ahead and subscribe to his channel. Go ahead and check him out. Check him out. He he has a lot of videos with different guns. Um, so with that being said, let's just jump into it. What do you think is the best gun for that guy? That, you know, doesn't know anything about guns and he's looking for a pistol. All right, <laughs> the the best gun I think that somebody should start out is. Is with a 22, and what I have here is a Walther P22, uh, Ruger SR22, very similar platform. It's a, it's an easy way to do it. A lot of women start out with 22s as well, and you know, it's like anything else. You know, when you, when you warm up with, the, you know, we play baseball. You warm up, you short, you, you, you warm up, you, you throw short, then you back up, you back up, you back up. Well, in, with in firearms, you want to start with something that you can hit your target with, something that you can learn from. And something like this would be a great, great gun to start out with because, let's just face it, some people are intimidated by recoil. So, especially women, women will say, "I want 22." They shoot that 22, and that's they're good. I don't want anything else. That works for me. I could do it. Ideally, I think everybody should move their way to a nine millimeter. Mm -hmm. And you know, there are different uh, platforms we can talk about, but. Uh, and, and maybe not stop there, but we're, we're talking beginners now. Make it get your way to a nine millimeter, and then talk about what type of gun you want to operate with, or you know. Yeah, I. I it's, it's great that you mentioned that because a lot of times we try to concentrate now. I think the first thing is going to be caliber. What caliber you you want to have? Uh, but a lot of times we want to go for that caliber that is going to take care of business. But if you can connect to a target. Uh, you're not going to take care of any business. You have to be able to connect. So if you tell me that you could connect, you could hit a target with a 22, to me that's better than not hitting a target with a 45. So absolutely, and and people they they get into what their friend tells them or what they say. You, you and, and I tell you what, one thing about gun guys, everybody has an opinion, and they're not great with listeners. <laughs> okay, so you know a lot of gun guys are not great listeners. They have all the answers. And it's just not a one size fits all thing. Mm -hmm. Well, the 22, I mean, the 22 has so many different uh, things that you could go from there. You know, like you said, recall, easy to shoot, easy to operate. And one thing that I just did a video about this is that a person that is actually 
shooting that pistol for the first time, I and mean, we're talking about beginners, they're actually going to enjoy it, mm -hmm. uh, which is going to prompt from then to to go ahead and, and and continue buying guns and continue uh you know I guess uh, looking for for a better caliber looking for a better gun um you know like like I talked about girls you know you you take a girl to shoot a 12 gauge and she's not gonna like it a lot of guys do that to the wife they take them out and shoot a 357 or 12 gauge and then she don't like guns that's because right. they should have started with something small like a 22. Something they want to practice with. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So, caliber definitely. I, I, I definitely think at least a nine mil will be the best choice uh, to to deal with. I think nine mil is like overall a great round. Um, I mean, not saying that a three eighty won't won't work or a forty or forty five. I just you know nine mil easy to shoot, easy to prep. Uh, very in, not very inexpensive, but affordable, what, so people could train. What do you think about that? Well, yeah, let's jump right into nine millimeter. Now we're looking at, you know, the the various sizes. You got the the Sakar CM9, tiny, right? Mm -hmm. And then we go here to a Magnum Research MR9. We're talking two totally different platforms, two totally different uh, trigger pulls, and then we could keep going and bring that all the way up to it. HEK P2000. So here I just featured three different guns, all very different. We go with striker fire, hammer fire. It's my opinion that a beginner should stick with a striker fire. Something where the, the trigger pull is consistent with each and every pull. Mm -hmm. I I recently had a friend over who who got he did he got broken into. And he said, I you know what, you're right, I need to get into this. And we went you know, I had all my guns out. We were, we were checking them out, and he fell in love with this Walther PPS. And you know what? It's not a bad choice. A lot of people would say, you know, get a Glock, get an M&P, get an XD. After checking them out, he said, you know what? This is the one I want. It's perfect. And uh, of course, he didn't shoot yet, but uh, mm -hmm. does have a lot to offer. So yeah. I said, get a striker fire nine millimeter. Yeah, I would agree with that. Not not only I I not not saying only the trigger is consistent, but it also is less confusing. Uh, when you have a hammer, you may have a safety or you have a decocker. It's it's just gonna confuse uh, a person that doesn't know how to shoot. You know, um, it, when I started when I was in the Marine Corps, you shooting the M9, it, it was pretty confusing at the beginning. It takes a little bit a little bit to to kind of get used to that. So. Pretty much you're saying that keep it simple. That's pretty much where you're going with it. Keep it simple. Keep, in my opinion, I would suggest a striker fire. You, you mentioned decocker. I've got I've got uh, two two guns here. Both have different uh, placements for the decocker. I throw a sig on here. The sig, the de the decocker, is in front of the slide stop. Yep. Which is much different than the CZ. So you know, there's a lot more to it than just Hammer fire, striker fire. Yeah, no, definitely. And the difference between that 10-pound trigger pull and the 4-pound trigger pull, which is pretty standard with the hammer fires, is quite a bit. Mm -hmm. As where with the, you know, you hear we got a Glock, it just same trigger pull each and every time. That consistency can build confidence, which eventually, if they want to go into a hammer style platform, that would work. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I think I would agree with you. Sh striker is just I, I I like it. Me personally, I think a striker gun. I, I like it better than a hammer gun. It's just simple. Now, I I definitely love to own some some hammer guns in the future, but I I do like how simple the striker guns are. Now, what about a safety? I know a lot of guys. A lot of guys are really scared about the safety. Like they have to have a safety in the guns, and uh, you know, definitely some of the striker guns have multiple different types of safeties, internals, and all that stuff, but. Uh, what would you tell somebody would uh, that have that safety, you know, need to have a safety kind of deal? Well, the first thing I'd ask is if they're going to carry the gun, and if they're going to carry the gun, I would say that your your safety, the best safety you have is a quality holster. All right, you know, you uh, you you put the gun. I got so many here, I forgot which. There it is. <laughs> there, there is no way this trigger can be pulled. I've tried it. I mean, I tried every way to manipulate it through this holster. It can't. It, the trigger cannot be pulled. 
So that that's the main thing. Um, also, I try to convince them that once the heart is racing, the mind is racing, stress kicks in, it's going to be very difficult to m make your fine motor skills work the way you need them to at that point in time. So it basically, I you know, I try to say, you know what, let's keep it simple here, keep it holstered, get it, you know, lock it up when you're not around or, or whatever the case. But yet, when you pull it, you don't want to have to another thing to worry about. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of guys get a lot of guys get uh, scared in a way because they just don't know. Uh, you know, like a Glock. People say, "Well, the Glock doesn't have a safety." Well, there's all the safety uh, already safety measures already implemented in the pistol that that you know is not going to go off, and you have to pull the trigger for the pistol to go off. And people kind of forget that in a way. Well, a lot of people also think, now we're, once again, we're talking about beginners. They think if you drop the gun, it can fire. And mm -hmm. they don't realize that the guns have a, a striker block in there that will prevent that. So that, that whole notion is completely false. So I think it's important to say, you know what, here's the gun. This is what has to happen. The trigger has to be pulled. You can drop the gun. You can throw it against the wall. It's not going to fire. Get that out of your mind. Forget everything that you've been told, every movie you've watched. It's not going to fire. Now, let's talk about how you are going to use this gun if needed. Yeah. Yeah, and that's uh, that's one of the things, I mean, one of the things that I would say is going to dictate what kind of gun you want to buy, too. How are you going to use this gun? Uh, especially if you're buying that first, I mean, this video is going to be about the first gun. Um, you know, if you're planning to carry your gun and you get a full-size gun, you, you're probably going to have issues concealing that gun. Or, or you're not going to conceal it as well as that CM9 that, that you just show. But if you want a, a home defense pistol, maybe you want to have a rail so you could attach a attach a, a flashlight to it. So you got to be able to identify what are you going to use that gun for. Oh, that you know, and that's huge. I remember even I when I first started this uh, many years ago, I thought I'm just going to go buy my gun. That's going to be my gun. I'm going to learn how to take it apart, clean it, put it back together, and not worry about it. And the problem is, as it turned out, I really once I got it, I didn't like it. <laughs> you know, and so they they have to understand that every single gun has its own personality, and you you do you have to identify it. Are you going to use this only for home defense? Are you going to keep it in a vehicle? Are you going to carry it? Are you going to you know keep it in the nightstand, which is a terrible idea. <laughs> Don't keep it in the nightstand. It's one of the first places home invaders look, and they're mm -hmm. looking for that gun. But uh, but anyways, yeah, and definitely a light. If you're gonna use it for home defense, my next, my next thing is that you need a light. I I am a big proponent of having a light on your home defense firearm. That that to me is huge. Yeah, that's that's something that we got to hear coming up to the when, when we get to the end. But that's something that I kind of lessons learned that I learned having having that light is for specifically for home defense is critical. I mean you. You want to be able to identify the target, but you want to be able to get get a system that has everything already implemented. You, you don't want to look for a flashlight. You want to be able to grab your gun, and it has everything that you need to address a threat. That's kind Absolutely. of like my concept for that. So, but I, I got to tell you, me personally, it, it got to be depends depends what gun you get, because. Uh, like the Glock, I think the Glock 26, even though it's a smaller gun, it's easy to conceal, but it could also be utilized as as pretty much go to combat too. I mean, using one of those Glock uh, Glock 17 round, uh, you're gonna have 17 rounds, and you're gonna have a very small pistol with 17 rounds. I, so I think different guns is kind of gonna give you a different capability. So um, do a lot of research, people. Watch a bunch well, of videos. Yeah, there's no question about that, and, my, and, and I may no secret about it. My my truck gun is a Glock 19. It's a Gen 2, and I have a 33 round magazine in the door and a 15 round magazine in the magwell. I, I it's a great system, and that you know it's it's stored in the car with all types of weather and everything. So I decided to go with the Glock for that. Yeah, yeah. So, so I guess I, I guess the first thing is going to be pretty much you know uh, identifying w what do you want that gun for, and then once you go from there, start deciding what you want to buy. Because like for me, I carry a gun every day, 
So having a rail in the pistol, you know, to attach a flashlight, it, it will be nice, but it's not really a showstopper. I mean, I carry a, the car CW45 and it doesn't have it, but that's my concealed gun. But for uh, for home defense, you know, the Glock 17, it definitely has to have some type of rail so I could attach some type of flashlight. Um, so, and again, you know, I carry a Glock 17. I've been carrying this gun for the last few days, just, you know, concealed carrying this gun. But it is a larger pistol, so it takes it takes more motivation, more dedication, if you want to put it that way. Um, some people may buy a big gun like this, and, and then they don't want to carry it because it's, you know, let's face it, it's big. It may be a little bit more heavy. It's difficult to conceal. Some people may may say, "No, I don't want to conceal it." And if you know, if you're not going to bring your gun, uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, well, well, uh, you are, have to be able to carry, buy something that you're going to carry. Well, if 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 they're going to even carry the one thing that I found is when 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 I show somebody a couple guns, I'll, I'll put I'll, I'll hand them a gun. The first thing they ask is, "How much is that?" So here's a P220. Six hour. If I tell them how much it is, they're gonna say, "Oh wow, dude, this feels sweet." Okay, what else do you have? <laughs> if they put that price tag up there, and so then if I say, "Okay, now this has a hundred dollar night sights on there," and you're also gonna need a light. This is a two hundred fifty dollar light. Okay, it's waterproof. It can do do all this stuff. And they're gonna be like, "You know what? I'm not. Yeah. I'm, this isn't." But you say, "Hey, look, here's a cart CT9." 300 bucks and it performs great they like ah, I like it. it feels good oh yeah this is the one I'm interested in and then mm -hmm. once they get into sort of the hobby and they start understanding they start reading watching videos then they come back and say what was that one what was that six hour you showed me again but you're not going to get that person right off the bat yeah don't forget they also have a wife telling them now honey we don't have that kind of money you know? <laughs> I feel pretty uh, pretty blessed that my wife is into guns. She she actually likes guns too. So, <laughs> but yeah, every now and then she does say does does oh. All yeah. do they all do? Sure. So, I right, so so pretty much. Uh, let's see. What about so so pretty much that rail is is critical if you doing home defense, but. Not really that critical if you uh, if you're gonna carry every single day. Do you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. I wouldn't want to carry a light mm -hmm. on uh, on, a, on a carry gun. What I, what I did want to show is though some of the lights that you know the the you have to have a, a a rail that can hold it. Now this is a full full Picatinny rail there, mm -hmm. all right. And we look at here. That's an accessory rail. It's not the same thing. Right. So there are certain accessories like lights and other things that will fit on, on a Picatinny rail that will not fit on an accessory rail. That light I just showed you that was on the SIG, it will not fit on this PPS. Okay. Well, there, there are things that we have to know. Uh, no question about it. So, so you got a bunch of guns there. Show us some some guns that you think they're they're pretty good choices for for beginners. Here's a Glock 27 with a lone wolf barrel in it. Okay, for a hundred bucks, I already made up my hundred bucks at the range by shooting nine millimeter. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it kind of pays for itself. I showed the car CT9. Love this gun, just absolutely Richard. love it. Very similar to a CW. I showed mm -hmm. the Walther PPS. Uh, I've got a shield here. I've got another car here. Um, my favorite range gun is the MR9. Now I'm showing all striker fires. Yeah. Uh, absolutely love this MR9. And then uh, if we get continue on with nine millimeter here, we're getting into some hammer fires. You you know this one. Here's the mm -hmm. CZ P07 Duty. And the cool thing about about uh, this is that CZ does make their own light. So you see that there it says CZ, yeah. and CZ's got some cool websites that sell some uh, sell some accessories, real good costs. Here's another Sig P239, a real nice gun. Yeah, it is. You know, single stack, single stack mag, holds uh, nine rounds, I believe. 
I have to say I believe because I'm looking at a bunch of them here. But um, <laughs> anyways, the, the, the carry gun and the home defense gun, it can be the same, but, you know, chances are once, once they get into it, once they get into the hobby, they're going to want to switch it up a little bit, and I don't blame them. Yeah, yeah. So what what is going to be? Uh, I mean, me personally, if I um, if I get a guy that tells me, hey, look, I'm planning to buy a gun. Uh, I don't know anything about guns. I definitely would tell him to get you know do some training, find somebody that is competent competent enough to give him some good training. Uh, go to the range, try out some guns, and, and make it simple. What what would you tell a new guy that doesn't know anything about guns and and he's going to go and buy that new gun? What would be your advice? Well, oh, I'd say you have to. First of all, you have to know how to shoot, and you have to know what's going on here. Secondly, you have to know what you're looking at. You have to know the difference between not just a price tag, but is it a hammer fire, is it a striker fire, what size barrel is it, and then you have to go rent a couple guns and try it. You know, that I, I cannot explain how many times I went, you know, I called around, do you have this gun, is it available for rent? Okay, I'll see you in 10 minutes because I'm coming. And you, sh you know, you show up or you buy 150 rounds of ammo and you shoot it. That's the best way, the best way to learn that gun, yeah. and you have a better idea. Yeah. I mean, it's, it sounds it sounds like it could be more expensive by doing that, but a lot of guys they buy so many guns looking for that perfect gun before they buy before they get to to you know a Glock 26 or something like that. They bought two, three, four guns. To, to make it to the perfect gun that they want to carry every single day. So I, I cannot explain how many guys buy a gun and that gun sits, they, they shoot a couple mags through it and say, okay, I'm good, and it, and it sits under the bed or it sits in a little safe or the nightstand drawer and it sits there and yet they feel protected. And that is that, that to me is a kiss of death when it comes to... Uh, you know, engaging a bad guy because you you're really not ready. Yeah, you know, definitely not. Training is critical. You got to go out there and and shoot your gun and and not only shoot it, it's inspect it, make sure that it actually works. Sure. So, <laughs> you yeah, know, know you how to clear it. You have to know how. You know, you to, people take ammo, various kinds of ammo. They they take that lightly, but there there's some ammo that. Each gun, it, the ammo can be a little bit different. You know, all of a sudden you're not shooting that well. You say, well, hang on, was that the same ammo you shot before? You know, and that makes a difference as well. So when people buy, they buy a gun, they get a box of ammo. I say, whoa, 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 hang on. You got one box of ammo. Yeah, that's right. It's only a 10-round magazine. Holds 50, you know, 50 rounds here. I said, no, no, no. Why don't you buy 200 rounds? Well, that's going to be X amount of dollars. Well, you know what? This is what you're getting into here. You know, this isn't, uh, we're not talking airsoft. And we're mm -hmm. not talking BB guns shooting frogs and birds. You know, you're talking about something that you're going to use to to save your life, and you're worried about the cost of a, a box of ammo. Mm -hmm. You know, you need, to, you need to rethink that. Yeah. Well, everything that you do before before actually getting into that fight is it, going to increase the possibility of you not getting killed. I mean, every little detail, you know, to include... The way you hold the pistol, the way you fire the pistol, the type of ammo you're using, all that is just going to increase your possibility of, of winning that fight. So You know, most people played baseball. They know what it's like standing there in the field just praying that the ball's not going to be hit to them because they're lacking confidence. You know? Yeah. Just, yeah. And, but, but when you have that confidence... You want the ball hit to you because you ju you're just feeling it. Now I don't know what, if that's going that same type of thing's gonna happen in say a home invasion scenario, but it certainly will help that you know you know hey listen I ran this situation through in my head now it's coming to fruition I'm 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 ready let's uh let's take care of business the best the best that I can yeah. Well, look at look into uh, things like in the military when you go inside the uh, the gas chamber. The only purpose why you're going inside that gas chamber and you're breaking that seal and letting that gas go inside your face, which it sucks, and then you you clear it up and all that. It's just to show you that the gas mask work. That's that's mm -hmm. that's that's why you're doing yeah. that. Like you just you just gaining that confidence that if something happened, you put that gas mask on, you know it's going to work. 
And, and that's pretty much what you're saying there. You want to make sure your gun works. Take it to the range and, you know, if something happens right now, I know that if I grab this gun, I know it's going to perform uh, to what it's supposed to be do. Uh, it was supposed to be uh, uh, supposed to do. So, and people think, yeah. oh well, I got a I got a Glock. It's gonna work. That, that's not true. Every gun is gonna fail. So you may want to make sure that it works for real. Yeah, so, absolutely. Hmm. I think the Glocks uh, Gen Four. I think we're the one that had uh, a bunch of issues when they came out. So, I had a lot of issues when it came out. And and you know you know good. Yeah, Glock was able to uh, to change out the recoil springs. They put a double recoil spring on them, and the Gen 4s are great now, but they did yeah. have issues. Uh, the Shield had issues. The XDS had issues. The Ruger LCP had a recall. I mean, these are these are real good gun manufacturers that have had recalls, mm -hmm. and things go wrong. Yeah. So... Uh, so definitely. So okay. So here, here we're gonna go into like, uh, you know, kind of like what guns not to get kind of thing. But so definitely, as a new beginner, as a new guy that is gonna buy a gun, make sure you know the caliber. You know, make sure that you know a striker versus hammer. Strikers is to me it's more is simple. Uh, the size of the pistol is gonna matter. You know, if you have a large pistol, it's gonna be kind of difficult to conceal in a way smaller. And then you know, talk about the rails. We talked about all that stuff. So there's a lot of research that you got to do. And one thing that I kind of, I kind of see a lot of people do is they watch one video and that's it you, you gotta watch you know go out there in the internet do some research research on your pistol watch a bunch of videos you know even watch those videos of people saying um, you know it's not working because whatever reason but um, it's more I don't know I, I see a lot of guys that go to a gun store and it's more than let me see that gun it looks kinda pretty so let me buy do some no, research on the things you're gonna get that's a great point because I put a video up on this gun here. It's a Desert Eagle 1911 Commander. Now, it just occurred to me at no point during my video did I say, this is not a good gun for a beginner. Most video reviewers don't say that stuff. They tell you about all the cool aspects of the gun, what it can and can't do, what you think of it, how it feels in your hand, and what it feels like when you shoot it, how you're able to uh, hit your target, some of the specs on it, you know. And so a beginner watches that and says, that, that's awesome. Uh, that's the gun I want. Mm -hmm. And then they get it. And they say, now how, do you, how in the world do you take this apart? When do you have to clean it? How do you have to clean it? I didn't know the 45 ACP was so expensive. You know, th this is heavy. I didn't, I didn't think I'd, this would be that heavy. I planned on, uh, you know, shoving this in my belt. And it's like, you watched the video and fell in love with, with the gun that you really don't know much about. Yeah. You know, you're absolutely right, and and the same thing goes back to uh to the caliber you're talking about. You know, a lot of guys are like, oh, if you shoot a, a 357, you can shoot any other gun, or if you shoot a 45, you can shoot a not any other gun. But a lot of people start shooting those type of guns, and then they just don't like it. And, and somebody that you could potentially would have make made that person uh, a law-abiding citizen that carries a guns every day and would love guns and part of the community. You just push him away because you know the first gun you gave him to shoot was a 357, and he just didn't well, enjoy it. And, and, and you, you're going to push him away if you give him something like this, like you said, with a 357, and they don't do well. Mm -hmm. You will push him away if you try to convince them that they have to pay a thousand dollars. You know, after the gun and all the accessories and everything, you're going to push him away. They don't want to do it. When you yeah. tell when when you say, listen. This is a great gun, and this is why. It shoots great. It's it's not that expensive, but yet it's reliable. Now let's go to the range and shoot it. Mm -hmm. Then then they they're successful with it. All of a sudden they're like, you know what? I can see. I I've had a lot of guys say, you know what? I can see why you love this. Well, yeah, I love it. I I I I can't get enough of it. Yeah. Especially, what what all the guns you got there that you think that shouldn't uh, should not be uh, a beginner's beginner's gun? Love Bond Arms Derringers, absolutely love them. This is a USA Defender. This is a backup 45. Mm -hmm. Now, honestly, 
a monkey could operate this, all right? You pull the hammer back and you fire. But it's, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a two-barrel, two-barrel, two-shot Derringer. Mm -hmm. For the very first gun, probably not a good idea. <laughs> you know, the you know this here. I've got four ten shot shells in here. You don't want to shoot four ten shot shells, okay? Every little pellet has a lawyer attached to it. So probably not the best gun. Eventually, you do want to get a Derringer. I have a uh, a little pug here. I've had more people say, oh, that gun's so cute. That's a cute gun. I'm like, this thing could, this, you have no idea. And so, uh, you know, once again, not the best choice. People say, oh, that's comfortable. I can throw it in the pocket. Yeah, you know what? You really need to get a holster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I wouldn't throw any gun in, in, in my pocket without a holster. No, no. But, um. People, if, if you watch en enough 1911 videos and you listen to people and you read articles, you're going to want to run out and get yourself a 1911. They're, they're good looking. They, they fire excellent. Uh, they just, they're, they're all around great shooting guns. Not the best choice for a beginner. I tell you what, taking apart a 1911, it's, it's definitely doable, but it's more of a process than... Mm -hmm. Your average XD and M and P. Yeah, so, and it goes uh, back to to, to movies too, because uh, I, you know, you're talking about a 1911. I family member, you know, watching one of those TV shows. The guy had an awesome looking 1911, like amazing, and, and that's all that person wanted a 1911, because you know he's watching TV on this guy, this show that he watches. Uh, the guy carries a 1911, but like you said. Very difficult to operate. Uh, you got to do more training. You got to develop muscle memory when it comes down to uh, taking off the uh, safety decockers. I mean, it's just a complicated, uh, complicated uh, a system. And some people are probably going to say, "No, it's not." Well, it's not complicated to you because you've probably been using that gun for many, many years. But for for a beginner, you give me a 1911. I don't even know what to do with it. So. Well. For the beginner, might like the idea of, of having a thumb safety all the time, mm -hmm. you know. But I, I have to admit, one of the first times I shot a 1911, I I literally and this was a long time ago, but I, I just touched that trigger and it fired and it scared me, and I was like, "Holy smokes, what just happened?" And uh, I realized that that's what they're like. These have a three and a half pound trigger pull. You give mm -hmm. that to a beginner, they're gonna. It's, it's gonna scare them. It, it could. Yeah. It could. You have to. Of course, you have to tell them. You know what they're in for. But well, actually, I, it was. Choice. I got a video. I got a video in the channel. Uh, I think it's something like 1911 scares jar of sex, and, and I was shooting a 1911, and it and it just scares the heck out of me. Because I wasn't expecting the trigger to, you know, I wasn't expecting the gun to go off. Like, I, I, I touch it. And, and you see me in the video, I kind of, like, did the, the jump. Um, it's pretty funny. I should I should reshare that video again. I, I One of my first videos. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the trigger is, like, way too, something that I wasn't used to it. So Yeah, and and it takes a little bit of time. But mm -hmm. once, once you are used to it, you, you do. You fall in love with them. Yeah. and I, and And... I will carry a 1911 with no issue. I carry a full side gun with no issue, but again, it's is I guess I'm more dedicated, more more. You know, I like guns, but for that first guy, carrying a Glock 17 may be a big deal. You know, it's way too much. But what do you think about revolvers? Because I know you like revolvers. I like them too. For for that beginner, I I think it could be a great deal. Well, the the one thing, I, yeah, you're right. I do. I love revolvers. The 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 one thing that you know, I think we can admit that from a from a little bit of a further distance, it's harder to stay on target. It just is, mm -hmm. and so uh, a a lot of people think that firearm training is going to the range and hitting a small group, and you know it's it's really not that important. I mean, it is. I guess it is. I mean, it's important to hit what you want, but but you know to 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 stand there and 
no stress and point and pull doesn't take a lot, you know. And so when they when they don't get that accuracy, they may get a little turned off by the revolver. What do I think? I love it, love it. I got a, a very nice holster. Uh, when I got this, I carried it quite a bit. Not so much anymore, but uh, but wouldn't hesitate to do it. Carry it yeah. again. Yeah. I know I I uh well I don't I don't own one but those the Smith and Wesson I think it's a four forty two or well, six forty two uh which are the airway one the six forty two stainless the four forty two is blue but so yeah which one which one's the air one air air was it air they both air are. something they both oh the are. Both are okay yeah the six forty two is stainless though. Okay, I, I think it's this, uh, that one, the one that I'm talking about that I hold a couple of months ago, and it's so light. I mean, it was just like, yeah, it, it was nice. Kind of, I mean, I think it was over 400 bucks, but eventually that one's gonna make it to my to my collection as well. So, so many, so many. Uh, but I, I, you know, you, you, one thing that I'm gonna mention that I should have mentioned at the beginning is that if you're planning to buy a gun. And, Definitely do all that research and all that. Just one of the things that you got to keep in mind, and I think Nick was talking about this in one of the chats, is that uh, you got to be able to use it too. But you you have to know that you may have to use that gun, and, and if that happened, you may have to you know to defend yourself. You may hurt someone. Um, so I don't know if that's a part of the process, you know, thinking process. A lot of guys may think, oh, I'm gonna get that gun to defend myself. But not really thinking. Hey, you know what? If you ever had to defend yourself, you may have to take somebody's life. Something really hard to take in. You know what I'm saying? No. Oh, yeah, that's. You know, in our in our concealed carry class here, we have a whole section on the various emotions that people will experience, and uh, you know, it's it's something they'll have to deal with. Yeah, it's it's hard, and I you know that's something that I I've been talking about in the channel a lot because a lot of guys says, well, if I have to use a gun, I use it and blah. blah. Uh, and that's that's just a hard situation that is 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 pretty difficult for a lot of guys. But one thing that I would say too, jumping into accessories, um, buying that first gun, I think one of the things that a lot of people got to do is is actually look into into accessories because. You may buy a really inex uh, inexpensive gun, and I think let me. Oh, I got my revolver right here. I got that EAA Windicator revolver. I mean, very inexpensive. I think it's uh, two hundred and sixty nine dollars. I paid for this thing. Uh, worked pretty well, and and I found it to be very accurate. And I mean, it's heavy as hell, but there's no accessories out there. Barely any holsters. Barely anything. So I think that's something that people got to keep in mind. If you buy a gun. Uh, you may not be, you know, you don't pay barely any money, and you know, inexpensive gun. The possibility of you not finding a holster is, is pretty high. So, well, or or you're gonna uh, get them custom made, which is my preference. I get them from uh, multi holsters, and he custom makes them. But in order to do that, you may have to leave your gun with him if he doesn't have that model. So, it's something yeah. to consider for sure. I actually got a holster from him. Uh, Steve sent it to me, and uh, man, he made some nice holsters. I haven't done a video on it, but really nice holster. So, so uh, accessory. You show you show some of the flashlights. Definitely. Uh, uh, I don't know. I just well, let me let me take it back. Let's talk about holster first. What do you what do you think is is a good holster? What's your definition of a good holster? I like the Kydex. I uh, I just took the shield out. I I really like the Kydex. And uh, th this holster, I, I've got three separate, maybe four holster videos up, but mm -hmm. you know, just the good retention, definitely good belt loop, mm -hmm. something that you can run with, something to feel comfortable with. I know a lot of guys they start carrying, they they the, their first thing they say is, I need I need it to be comfortable. Okay, I get it. I think I want it on my ankle. I don't, you know, and and I tell you what. It, and and I I can get it to a degree, but I tell you what, ankle carrying is some of the worst type of carrying a gun. It's 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 hard. It bounces around. It takes a long time to get it. It's just not a good idea, uh, especially for a beginner. It's got to be around your waist. 
Other people yeah. I heard say, well, I, I want to get a shoulder holster. Well, you know, I tell you what, I have a shoulder holster. It's not fun. It's, it's, mm -hmm. and you're very limited. You know, you're wearing something like, like this, you know, it, you can't take it off. So you're just, you're, you're mm -hmm. limited as to what you can do. Put it around the waist, you're good to go. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I carry a, a shoulder holster for a while in Afghanistan and just the straps. I mean, then again, it was so hot, so hot in, in, in Afghanistan, but I would start sweating and you could see the straps that, of my holster. Um, so, but yeah, I agree with you. I'll, I like hide it, but you know, I, I always look for something that it, I don't like such a, a bulky holster. I like something very, very small that I, has a good retention that I could put in my belt, you know, either 1 o'clock or, or 3, 30, 4 o'clock, and, and that's about it. But I think that a lot of mistakes that a lot of guys make is that they buy a pretty decent gun, and then they buy a really crappy, uh, a really crappy holster, and, and you yeah. got to be able to spend some money. And they're yeah. they're really not as that expensive nowadays. You could buy a pretty decent holster for fifty bucks. Yeah, yeah, you have to be willing to put out fifty bucks and another fifty for ammo, and you know, start there. You have your gun; it doesn't end there. You need some ammo. You need a holster. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we can move on. Now we we talked about flashlights, and uh, you know, definitely if you're gonna get a home defense pistol, I would recommend you to have a rail so you can have a flashlight. If if not, I don't think it's a big deal. But uh, what about mo uh, modifications? You know, like guys buy the gun and the and this happened to uh, um, my little brother. You know, he he got his Glock 23 and he started making mods and he wanted to change the trigger and he wanted to change so many things. And I'm like, man, just take it easy, man. You know, the gun works the the, the way it is. So what do you well, think about all those mods? I, I'm not into it. Not with now with rifles, I am, but with my handguns, I'm really not. Um, I look at the table here, and I don't know that I minded any trigger. Matter of fact, I have not. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't think it's. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. If if you like guns and 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 you want to modify your gun, yeah, definitely go for it. For but for that beginner buying the gun for the first time, just buy something that is very simple that you don't have to deal too much to it. Right. You don't have to do too much to to that gun. So I mean, eventually when you get familiar and you start loving it, yeah, do things to it if you want to, but just I would just prefer to get something that is a full package, you know, like a Glock 19. I mean, other than changing the size, you know, MMP shield. Just MMP shield is a great gun. The cars, you know, you just buy them and put them in your pocket. You know, shoot 100 rounds, 200 rounds, make sure you're good, and, and put it in your belt, and, and you're ready to go. Yeah. That's simple. Yeah. So I feel the same way. Yeah. All right, so what else? Uh, anything else you want to you want to show? Anything else that you, you think we miss? No, I think we hit on most of the key points. I, I would just uh, suggest to people don't don't go into this thinking you're going to buy your gun and it ends there. You know, you you have to practice. You have to practice. You have to get some other things. It, it, the the gun is just one price point, and don't be cheap. I tell people all the time. You're worried about saving 50 bucks. How much would you actually pay to save the life of your family? And once you give me that number, now let's go look for a gun that can do that. Yes. <laughs> it's difficult when you put it that way. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let me let me do a recap here because we talked about a lot of, a lot of things. Uh, definitely caliber. Uh, it's going to be a, a, kind of a big deal. You know, I will go with 9 mil, but... Uh, the biggest thing is going to be able to connect. You know, don't go for a 45 if you cannot hit the target. If you got to use a 380, 22, hit the target. That will be the biggest thing on that. Sure. Um, striker, striker. We both agree that striker guns are a little bit easier to use. To start out. Uh, with. To start out with, uh, size. Size is going to be more into you know depends what you want, but keep in mind that a large pistol is going to be a little bit more difficult to conceal, but Medium to small, uh, medium to small is going to be a pretty good choice. Um, what else I got? Rails, rails. If you're going to have a home defense pistol, some type of combat pistol, I would definitely, I would definitely uh, advise to get a rail. Uh, 1911, six, and things like that may be a little bit difficult. So you want to be able to to learn how to use your gun first, and then continue to increase from there. Get a good holster. Get a good flashlight if you got a, if you got some type of home defense 
uh, pistol, combat pistol, and I wouldn't modify the pistol too much, other than like the Glocks, other than the sights, um, other than the sights, I got the sights in this one. I wouldn't mess too much with it. You agree with that, Dan? Absolutely. I got my HK here. I've got the Trigicons on here. They go hand in hand with, you know, darkness. You got your light, flash your light. Now you're back on with your night sights. Mm -hmm. Quick flash of the light. Now you're back on with night sights. That that's how that you know you read up, you learn. That's how you do it. They go hand in hand together. Yeah, I I, I and one thing that I, I want to add up about night sights too is that if if you put your your pistol close to you, you know, because something happened, you know, you only got a few seconds to react. Those night sights, you're gonna be able to see your pistol because you, you can see like the the dot sights. You see those three dots. Like right there. Yeah. So um, kind, of like a, kind of like a reference point where where to go and reach for your gun uh, a nine time. So. Well, uh, anything that, else you want to add up? Well, the, also the night sights will let you know. You know, is it is it resting this way? Is it resting this way? You know, at night is it is it mm -hmm. is it you know cockeyed? You know, I I make sure that it's the same place every night, no different than a cell phone. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, I wanted to do a video about this. I don't think I'm going to do it, but uh, I saw a video well, about a week ago. Uh, it was kind of like one of those things. Somebody's breaking in inside the house, and, and the guy was showing what to do, and he jumped out of his bed, and he ran into uh, his dresser, opened the dresser, opened a safe, and took his gun out. And, and I definitely wouldn't agree with that. I think once you go to sleep, you want to have that gun close to you. Oh. Something happened, you grab it. There's no time for you to jump out of your bed, go to your dresser, you know, use your fingerprint to open your safe. Get you. There's no time for that. It has if, to be ready to go. Yeah. What if you? What if by the time you wake up, some guys in your kids' room? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah. That thing. No. Arms length. Yeah. I I tell you about the video off the off this, but uh, yeah. All right. Anything else you want to share, Dan? No, no, I think this has been great. I hope that uh, this helps somebody out. You got any, anything going on in your channel? Anything you want to plug in? Um, now I got a VZ uh, review coming up. I shot that quite a bit. Love the gun. And, um, you know, I just recently put up a, this Desert Eagle 1911 Commander model. And uh, really enjoy that as well. Cool, cool. That's uh, the VC, man. That's such a sweet gun for such a good price. Yeah, um, and they do have some. That that's that would be a kind of rifle that I would love to get and just modify it just just for fun, you know. That would be fun. Yep. Yeah. All right, everyone. I definitely appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully, this helps someone. Uh, a lot of information. We appreciate you coming, Dan, and showing all your guns. Definitely, you have a great collection uh, collection of, of awesome pistols. Uh, you know, if you guys got any questions, put them down in the comments. I try to answer all those comments. If if I don't know an answer, I, I'm just going to let you know. But uh, definitely appreciate you guys watching. As always, like the video, subscribe to the channel, share the video, and as always, God is in control. <laughs>